Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So the trailer for the Elvis movie came out a while ago and no doubt we've all seen it by now. But probably what impressed all of us is the level of detail that Baz put into it. And as a fan, there's many glimpses throughout Elvis's life that we recognize. Well, recently another trailer was released and it has even more goodies. So I thought we would dive in and take a look at real pictures from Elvis's life and compare them to screenshots I took of the trailers. Of course, this won't be every scene. It seems like every public appearance that he did has been recreated in the movie, which is really exciting for fans. I'm just picking out a handful of some that struck me. Let's jump in. So for most of Elvis's high school years, him and his parents lived in a housing project called Lauderdale Courts in downtown Memphis. There are even some famous pictures of him as a young teen inside the courtyard outside their unit. This screenshot shows Elvis hugging his mom in that same area and it looks identical. During that same time in Elvis's life, him and his family attended the First Assembly of God Church in Memphis. But sometimes Elvis and his friends would sneak off to the black church nearby, which was called East Trigg Baptist, where he loved to take in the music of Reverend Herbert Brewster. I even created a whole video about this if you'd like to check it out in this link right here. I think it's so special that the Reverend was included in this film since his sermons and his music were so influential to Elvis. On June 5th, 1956, Elvis appeared on the Milton Berle show. There are some great photos from this performance, like this one that was used for the clocks with the swinging legs. This picture is colorized, but it gives a clear look at Elvis's clothes, the band with the cow print kick drum. Then in the movie, it's recreated identically. It's amazing. Then on June 29th of 1956, Elvis was in New York to appear on the Steve Allen show. Photographer Alfred Wertheimer snapped this photo of Elvis in a rehearsal space playing the piano in a corner. This picture was actually used on the cover of Peter Baranek's Last Train to Memphis. I just loved this quick look of the actor sitting at the piano or looking over his shoulder and it looks exactly like Alfred's picture. Another epic performance that summer was at Rustwood Park in Memphis on July 4th. This time Elvis was performing for a crowd of 14,000 fans and the pictures from that day are recreated down to the lights and Elvis's tie. This famous Alfred Wertheimer shot taken from the back of the stage was recreated in this action-packed scene in the trailer. It's just amazing to see the level of detail in these pictures. And then of course the scenes at Graceland are super exciting. So here is a rare photo of what the Presleys saw when they were house hunting for a home that was more private than their Audubon Drive home with their realtor, Virginia Grant. So when we get to see it recreated like this, the level of detail is just exquisite. That was really the address for Miss Grant's office in Memphis. Later in that scene, Elvis pulls the pink Cadillac up to the door of his newly bought Graceland. And here's what impressed me about this. The coach lamps on the porch, the sconces that are on either side of the front door, and the long hanging light over the porch. Originally, they were these glass ones with dark brass or dark metal. These came with the house and are photographed in the background in 1957. But Elvis replaced all three of these with ornate white globes shortly after. I'm not exactly sure when, but they were replaced by the time of this photo of Elvis on leave from the army in June of 1958. Those original lamps are still around though. They're the ones that are hanging in the corner of the smokehouse. And I actually created a video about it if you're interested in the link. Another interesting Graceland peak, this close up of Gladys and Elvis. It's blurry, but if you look closely, we can see that they're in the living room. There's the fireplace mantle with the starburst clock above it. But if I may nitpick, the starburst clock that we see at Graceland today was given to Elvis in the 1960s. And if Gladys is alive, it wouldn't have been that one. Before that, there was a very similar clock above the fireplace. In fact, it was a starburst clock, but that one was in a frame. It's listed on the receipt from the interior designer and depicted in this rendering from the company in what the living room would eventually look like. The only actual photo I've ever seen of it is in this one of the dining room from 1963, shared by Fred Huber on Facebook. If we look past the dining room into the living room, it's captured in the background with the frame visible around it. 
Let's jump to 1958 and likely one of the worst days of Elvis's life. On August 14, 1958, Elvis lost his beloved mother, Gladys. The press was at Graceland when this picture was taken. Elvis and his dad, Vernon, are on the front steps, embracing each other with their grief written all over their faces. Let's just stop and take a look at the detail of their shirts. And now this still from the Elvis movie. Look at their shirts. Vernon's is identical. He even has a pen in his shirt pocket. And may I point out the windows on either side of the front door? The way that they looked up until the stained glass with roses was added in 1974. This will be just amazing to see recreated. The following year, 1959, Elvis met his future wife, Priscilla Beaulieu, while he was stationed in Germany. We got to see just a glimpse of them in the early days of their romance. Elvis in his army uniform and Priscilla with her curly, tousled hair. It looks like that still could have been a recreation of this day, March 2nd, 1960, when he was discharged from the army and left Germany. This is Elvis and Priscilla in the car on the way to the airport. In February of 1968, Elvis and Priscilla welcomed their daughter Lisa Marie and several photos were taken of the family while they were still in the hospital. This photo from the movie is just incredible. I can't stop staring at it. The clothes, her makeup, the pose, and check out the detail of the wallpaper, even down to the bed sheets crumpled in the background. This is so cool. Every scene in this movie is packed with real true to life details but the 1968 comeback special sequence has got to be one of the most mind-blowing in my opinion. Here is Elvis on the stage with the crowd all around. Let's take a closer look at the fans that are sitting next to the stage behind the actor portraying Elvis. From left to right, there's a guy in a suit, a girl wearing dark blue, a girl in light blue, one in yellow, one in pink, and then a girl in a pink sweater. Now, let's look at a real still from 1968. Left to right, there's the guy in the suit, a lady in dark blue, light blue, yellow, pink, and pink sweater. I just, I can't get over the details. The last scene I want to point out are the glimpses that we get of Elvis and Priscilla's divorce. In real life, in October of 1973, Priscilla wore a brown patchwork jacket with dark cuffs. And then here is the actress. Same jacket, and even her purse is on the same side. Elvis was in aviator sunglasses, a tracksuit with an American flag pin on his lapel, and then here is the actor, identical down to the lapel pin. And that pin was actually made by Elvis's jeweler, Lowell Hayes, and John Daly even created a video about it with Lowell. One of my favorite things ever is comparing a photo from back then to what it looks like today. So this movie is kind of like that all in one. I just feel like we're so lucky to have this movie, such a big mainstream movie, because Elvis has been gone for so long, but his music endures and he gets his spot on the stage today. And that is it. Those were just some of the things that I noticed, but let me know what you noticed in the comments below. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram for rare photos and fun facts, and I'll see you guys in the next video.